Hey there guys, Luke here with the Outdoor Gear Review. Hope you're all doing well. Today for this episode, we're going back to our instructional series. And with this series, we're going to be starting a new segment on water purification and filtration. Now, to begin with, we're going to be starting with the very basic, and that means boiling water. And of course, we're going to be showing you guys how it's done, and I'm sure you already know, but we're also going to be touching on some of the science that's behind it. For this video, we'll be using a simple tin can. I believe this used to be a coffee can at one point in time. But we're going to be using this. We're going to go ahead and grab some water from the creek here, and then we'll head up to our camping spot and get our fire going. Now, of course, if you're getting water from a creek, from a stream, there's going to be dirt in it no matter what. So, if you want it, you can, of course, use your bandana to filter the water to strain it, essentially. And that's fine. But, of course, Guys, in life, nothing is perfect. You're gonna have a little bit of dirt in there and it's not gonna kill you. So, for the sake of this video, I'm just gonna grab some water right here. Here you go. And I'll go ahead and put the cap on this. We've got our water. Now we're ready to head up to the campsite and get a fire going. The wind was blowing just a little bit, and I just made a simple little windscreen right here. Nothing too fancy, but functional. Our fire now is pretty much ready and hot enough for us to start heating up our water. So what I'm going to do is, I'm going to make a nice little area, and I'm just going to scoot that in right next to it. Just like so. Now, of course, if I wanted to, I could build some sort of stand out of rocks, and I could put it on top of it, but this works as well. Of course, there's many ways to skin a cat, as the saying goes, and this is one of those ways. So as my water is heating up here, I can keep feeding the fire from this side. I also have this windscreen set up, and that will also help hold that heat in and kind of distribute it around your can, around the water that you're trying to heat up. Now, another thing I could do is, I could put up a rock wall on this side, just like so, and that will help also keep that heat in around your water. As you begin to get a really nice good bed of hot coals, you can begin scraping those around and putting them around your can, and that will help you get that water to the boiling temperature. Now when it comes to water and boiling it, you know, water that's been boiled or heated to temperatures of 160 degrees Fahrenheit for 30 minutes will basically kill any and all pathogens and bacteria and, you know, the two major uh, sources of, you know, sickness, uh, Giardia and Cryptosporidia. At 185 degrees, you can kill it in just a couple minutes. Once you can heat your water to a very good boil and have temperatures of you know, 212 degrees, it will kill any sort of virus or pathogen instantly. Now, as you guys can see, there's a little bit of dirt, there's a little bit of junk in my water, and you know what? That's absolutely fine. That stuff is not going to harm you in any sort of way. The fact is, you know, if you're going to be into bushcraft, you're going to be into survival, and you're going to be into backpacking, you better get used to drinking water like this. Because, you know, there's going to be times where water like this looks absolutely clean compared to other water that you're going to find. There's been times when I've been out on the trail and I've drink, you know, drank water from a ditch. And you can imagine that, you know, this looks about a billion times better than that did. One thing to remember <clears throat> when it comes to boiling water is that the higher you go up in elevation, the lower the boiling temperature will be of your water. And that also means that you need to boil the water for a longer period of time. If you are at elevations below 6,500 feet, you can boil your water for one minute, and I'm talking about a rolling boil, and it will kill just about everything in it. If you're above elevations of 6,500 feet, you will want to boil your water for at least three minutes. Water will boil at a lower temperature at higher elevations, so it actually needs to go longer to kill those pathogens and so on. A good example of that is if you're at 12,000 feet water will boil 
at 190 degrees. If you're at 6,200 feet, water will boil at 200. You can see what I'm saying there. All right, guys. As you can see there, our water is rolling, boiling. And what we're going to do, we're just going to let that go for about a minute to two minutes. Uh, you know, I really don't pay too much attention to the time. Time's irrelevant to me, you know. And also, I'm not worried about fuel because I have plenty of firewood. And I'm not really worried about how much evaporation that I'm going to have at this point in time. Now, if this was the only water I had that was right in this cup, then I would pay attention. I would actually sit down and count if I didn't have a watch, something like that. But this is exactly what you want. Now, when it comes to boiling water, there are so many different ideologies about it. A lot of people see it in different ways. And, you know, for myself, if I'm going to go through all the hassle of starting a fire so I can boil my water, so I can purify it, kill those viruses and so on, I am going to make sure that I boil it for at least a good solid minute. And if I'm at higher altitudes, I'll do it for two to three minutes, depending on the altitude, of course. We're approaching the one minute mark. So, you know what? We might as well disperse this a little bit. I, of course, I wouldn't want to stick my hand on this now and grab it. It's just too hot. But, if I start taking apart what I've constructed here, let me show you. There you go. Something like this. Now, I can take my multi-tool here, and I can grab it, pull it out of the way, and I can take my water to a nice, good, safe, flat spot to cool off. One thing I should mention, when you're using stone to build some sort of platform or a, you know, a wind block, a base for whatever you're cooking and heating, you better make sure those rocks aren't wet. If it's a porous rock that has you know, some moisture in it, if you heat it up, that moisture will expand and that rock will explode. I've seen it happen many times. So, uh, you know, it's definitely something to be mindful of. If the rock's wet, I don't recommend that you use it. So there you go, guys. That's pretty much the simple process of boiling water to kill pathogens and viruses. Now, one thing to keep in mind is that um, boiling water will not remove toxic chemicals from your water. So if you're drinking from a questionable source, that's not going to do it. You'll have to use some sort of filter. Now in the future we will be having videos that, that continue with this instructional series that talk about the differences between purifying water and filtering water because there are some major differences to each one of those. To go back over the times and the temperatures needed for you to be able to have safe drinking water, they are 30 minutes at 160 degrees, 3 minutes at 185 degrees. At 212 degrees, it's an instant kill. Now, I don't know about you guys, but when I'm out in the wilderness, when I'm hiking around bushwhack, bushcrafting and backpacking, I don't carry a thermometer with me to, uh, you know, test my water and see what it's at. And that is why I highly recommend that you get your water to a rolling boil. Fisheye bubbles, you know, the little bubbles you see at the bottom that kind of pop up here and there, doesn't count. That, that is not a good indicator. That does not tell you that your water is hot all the way through. So you definitely want to have, you know, a rolling boil. One good minute is fine. Of course, like I said before, it depends on your elevation. If you're higher in elevation, the boiling point, the temperature goes down. But just because it's boiling at a lower temperature doesn't mean that those pathogens and so on are getting killed. So you would have to boil it for a longer period of time. Also, like I said, when it comes to actually having kind of dirty, grimy water, you know, that's just something that you have to get over. That's just a mindset right there. Um, you know, Americans especially, you know, we think that water has to be crystal clear, look like it came out of a mountain spring. And the truth is that most water in this world isn't like that. So, you know, there's no point and need in a survival situation, a backpacking situation, or bushcrafting situation that you need to be a water snob. So, there you go. When I'm out and about, honestly, boiling water is not my main go-to method of purification. Uh, there are some negative aspects to it. One is that it takes wood, it takes time, it definitely takes energy, and I mean, it's something that you do have to kind of babysit. 
Um, also, if it's raining, if things are wet, well, good luck. You know, that's just going to make your life that much harder. Now, for myself, I do like using UV light, but again, there's negatives to this. And of course, we'll talk, talk about all this more in the future, but with UV light, you're talking about batteries. If you're using drops of some sort, iodine or aquamira, you are you know, also taking a risk of leakage, something like that. It also takes a little bit of time. There's a little bit of process to it. Uh, iodine, some people are allergic to. I mean, there's different aspects to each one, and there also are some negatives. Guys, thank you so much for watching this episode of the Outdoor Gear Review. Of course, make sure to like, comment, subscribe, all that good stuff. And make sure to check out our, our Facebook page, the Outdoor Gear Review, and our website at theoutdoorgearreview.com. Of course, make sure to check out our channel for um, updated videos on our instructional series when it comes to purifying water. In the next couple days, we'll have tablets, we'll have UV light, we'll have um, drops, so on and so forth. Guys, be well. Take care.